Hello. Um, so my name is Catherine, and in Thailand they have trouble saying that, and they say Kakorin, which sounds sort of like you have to spit or something. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story tonight about my first Thai boyfriend. Um, and I brought my friends here to cheer me on. <laughs> they don't know what my story is about tonight. So, um, yeah, Kakorin, let's go. So I know that um, it's discouraged to bring notes when you have events like these, and so I got a little tattoo on my hand <laughs> on my way over here. And I'm going to start with um, how I met my first Thai boyfriend. And one of the reasons I got this tattoo is so I would remember to tell you about some of the other things that happened, like uh, Wallapa the Virgin. And I also wanted to tell you about um, when I got cancer in my eye. So those are here on my hand. Um, so, so, you know, I don't know why the U.S. government actually sends 21, 22 year olds out into the world for two years to be alone in a village because they're bound to um, meet people and uh, find ways to get to know them. So um, in my group there are 70 of us and so I joined the Peace Corps after college, went off to the training session and had training for three months, and in that three months I learned how to say just a couple of things. I could order food, and I could say, you know, where's the bathroom? And that, uh, I think that was it. Maybe, yeah, that was about it. So um, I wasn't all that experienced when I was sent off to my site. Has anyone else been in the Peace Corps in here? No other Peace Corps volunteers, okay. So you get three months of training, and then you go off, and they send you somewhere far away. So I went uh, 10 hours away from Bangkok by bus, and I got off the bus, and I saw the most beautiful man I had ever seen in my life. Um, he had dark hair, he had kind of tan skin, he had olive-shaped, you know, olive, yeah, skin, almond eyes. Um, he had this kind of James Dean look. He's had kind of a bad boy thing going on, and I just felt madly crazy in love with him. And thought, you know, he is so pretty. <laughs> he's really so pretty. My friends are laughing, right? Um, he's so pretty. So. Um, the next thing was, I guess he thought I was pretty too. So we had to kind of figure out, between me not speaking Thai and him not speaking any English, how we would get to know each other. And um, so we just, I don't know how that all happened, but we did get to know and like each other. And, and uh, we worked together, he was my neighbor. And uh, so the, I've got a bunch of other things to tell you and I just don't know which one to start with. So I guess I'll start about the time that I got cancer in my eye. Um, I, we were on a motorcycle, and the way that ties do dates is that if the guy sits in the front and the girl holds on to his back, that's not a date, that's just normal. But if the girl drives, then he can have like the most fun. <laughs> so I didn't even realize when I was going on my first tie date that that was what was going to happen. But so, um, so, we were, so we were on a date, and there I was um, with my big ridiculous Peace Corps helmet, which is humongous bright yellow thing, and I got a bug in my eye, I mean, it was a firefly, got a bug in my eye, I had to go to the, the hospital, and it turns out I had scratched my retina, so they took out the bug, and they put a bunch of goop in there, and then they covered it with uh, gauze, so then we went back to the office, because we'd been playing hooky, um, having this little <laughs> date, I guess, and my coworker said, you know, oh no, what happened, and then I practiced what the doctor had told me, and I said, Malang Kauta, and they said, oh, oh no, and I said, no, it's really no big deal. Because in the Thai language, the word for malang and the word for malang are really close. The word malang is a firefly or a, a bug. The word malang is cancer. So I was going around telling everybody, it's just cancer, don't worry about it. I'll be able to remove this. You know, so people started bringing me fruit baskets and gifts, and they felt really terrible. So this was just the beginning of a lot of cultural misunderstandings. Um, so let's see, the next one, I got the cancer one. Next, let me tell you about Balapa the Virgin. Um, uh, we lived in a set of government apartments, and it was me and Wallapa, her nickname was Sweet, then there was Little, then there was Big Balls, then there was Big Ears, and then Pepper on the end. And then a little bit past that was Champion, and that was my first high boyfriend, his nickname was Champion. So um, he didn't really want everybody to know that he was coming over, so he used to sneak in the back of my house when he came to visit, and you know, find a time, wait till it was dark, sneak in the back, and go. And when he came over to chat, there would be a car that would come and park in the front of the house, and we weren't really quite sure 
who that was. Um, so in the daytime, I asked my neighbor, Sweet, Walla Pa, you know, who is that, do you know who that car is? It looks like a cop car, you know, what's going on here? And she said, I don't know, I didn't see any car. Uh, but she also shared with me that she was a virgin, that she was borisu, which means pure. And pretty much every night she would cook for me and we'd take papayas off the trees or, you know, take whatever was around the yard to eat. And she would share with me all the virtues of being pure and how I should make sure that, you know, that that was something that I should maintain. And it made me a little nervous because I had this new type boyfriend who was sneaking in and <laughs> this like feeling that maybe she knew what was happening. Um, but she was saying that she was the pure one until I started to feel the boards upstairs because we lived in this place where the boards um, in my bedroom would be the same board that's in her bedroom. And you could basically hear across any of the rooms. So um, before long, I started to think that maybe Walla Pa wasn't a virgin after all, <laughs> that there was um, a lot of shaking going on. And I, I also thought maybe if I was going to do some exercise like that, I should probably do it downstairs in, where there was a cement floor and where there wouldn't be, you know, people wouldn't all know this stuff. So, you know, it took a while to get through the cultural things that were, you know, happening um, with this new relationship. It was much more com complicated than we thought. So we have, you know, my Thai boyfriend sneaking into my house and then we have the policeman sneaking around the back as well. So um, there's a little bit more sneaking on going on in just a second. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to tell you a little story about some, a cultural difference, just um, one more before we get to the heart of the matter. My friend Karen came to visit us and um, my Thai boyfriend thought he would make some dinner for her. So he made the soup and rice and we laid it all out there and Wallapa the Virgin was there and I was there and <laughs> my friend Karen from college was there. And uh, so we start to eat and Karen pulls out a chicken foot. <laughs> And she's like, I'm not eating that. That's disgusting. I'm not sharing. I can't do that. So we put that, you know, by the side. And my toy Thai boyfriend's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just take out all the chicken feet that are in this bowl. So he takes them all out, puts them there. <laughs> so she said, well, it's OK. I can have a little broth and rice. So she takes it. Then she pulls out something else. Um, any Thai food fans in here? Chunks of coagulated chicken blood? That's pretty commonly in a lot of soup. So that's the next thing she found. So he said, it's okay, we'll take all this, these chunks of coagulated chicken blood out of your soup. So take that by the side of, you know, um, the mat where we were sitting. So then the dogs start to come. So they start sniffing around. And they were like really excited about the whole thing. So my Thai boyfriend thinks that this is upsetting to my guests. So he takes out a rock and starts throwing rocks at the dogs that have decided that they want to share our dinner with us. Um, so it was tricky to work out the cultural things there. Like, she doesn't really care about the dog. She'd prefer not to have the chicken feet in her soup. Um, but I still, I really like this guy, so I stuck with him and uh, decided I would make a go of it. So not long after that, I had some other friends from college. Uh, Mary and Fran came to visit. We were in our, in my uh, living room. There's a lot of action going on in that living room. So we were there, and they hadn't met him yet. Um, they had just arrived. And so they're looking around outside, and there was some noise going on out there. And they said, hey, yeah, come, come here, check her in, come over here, see what's going on. And it was um, my Thai boyfriend on a motorcycle. So I look at that, and I said, that's him, isn't he cute? And he looks kind of like, you know, like a young Marlon Brando, doesn't he? And then we see a woman chasing him with a meat cleaver like this. <laughs> <laughs> so they say, who's that? And I said, I'm not sure. <laughs> his wife. <laughs> so she left this situation. Yeah, he's, he's still alive. It was okay. She didn't kill him. But um, she kind of crushed me. So I said, forget it. Uh, you know, we're not going to uh, do this anymore. So um, I said, and, you know, unless you break it off and bring me a piece of paper, <laughs> then it's over. And he's like, what, what do you, you know, try to imagine this conversation happening. It's like, you know, paper, paper. I need this, and then I'll go out with you. But without this, so I wanted to see divorce papers, and he couldn't. You know, he said, "Oh, we're separated. I don't have divorce papers." I said, "Well, if you don't have divorce papers, then let's end this." So we ended this. He said he was going to try to, you know, work it out and come back. And it, you know, a couple weeks went by, and I met number two Thai boyfriend who had almost the same name. Um, 
<laughs> so a bit different. And um, so he asked me out, which was great. And um, the other thing is, he was really, really pretty. <laughs> you know, he like, had sort of dark skin and like olive shaped eyes and um, you know black hair. And um, turns out they, it was kind of a look in that area. Million <laughs> 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 people look like. That. But, um, you know, I was really young. <laughs> So I was getting ready to go, and Sutin shows up. Yes. Sutin shows up with the divorce papers. <laughs> and so that was a little bit awkward. Um, he was trying to say, I paid money, I get the paper. And I said, you bribed her to deport? Like, what? I don't understand. He said, no, no, I paid money, she made me build her house, and then I got the papers. <laughs> so, uh, OK, this is a really weird story. You have to leave. There's someone picking me up. So he went, I thought he was leaving out the back door, which is where he always left out of. So that seemed normal. And Sutan came to pick me up, and I had to serve him water, because that's what we always do. So I went in the kitchen to get the water, and there was Sutan standing there. I'm not leaving. No, nope. <laughs> I'm not going to go. And uh, so it was a very awkward moment as we figured out, um, you know, as, as I realized that he really did care, and he wasn't going to go anywhere. And the new guy, you know, I probably looked as nervous as I do now. Like, who, how do I get one of them to leave? I don't care which one. <laughs> so, um, um, and, okay, so finally I told Sutin, look, you've got to go. I have plans with this other guy. So Sutin left, went and sat um, in front of his house, which was, you know, next to big balls and big ears and pepper and everything. So he went over there, was sitting there. We left. I saw it on the back because by then I knew what a date was and I did not want Sutan all over me. So I was like, okay, you go, you're going to ride the motorcycle, your hands will be busy. So we drive away and I saw Sutin sitting on his front stoop and he smiled at me. And that's when I realized this 26 Thai smiles, there really are, that there is a Thai smile that means you've broken my heart and I want you back. So that was the, the, um, the smile I saw, and as I turned the corner, he put his head in his, you know, in his arms, and it looked like he was going to sob. So I understood that it wasn't any kind of smile that I ever thought before. And I think I learned a lot about culture that day. And um, I would say the moral of this story, I've been thinking about this a lot, just because you see something pretty, it doesn't mean you have to have it. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine.